Another representation of disjoint set is what we call disjoint set forests. Okay, so disjoint set forests. Okay, so a forest is just a set of trees. So if we think about it like that, then remember that we have a set of disjoint sets. We're going to represent each individual set as a tree. So imagine that I have two sets. One is, let's say, A, C, E, G, H, J, D. Okay, whatever. This is a set. There's no order on it. Okay. And suppose I have another set that is B and F. So one, represent, one way to represent each set is a, is, is a tree. So imagine that this is a tree. And see here, I have E, I have, let's say, J here, and I have D. I have, imagine that I have three children here, G, A, and I believe I got all the letters now. Now, each node is going to point, it's going to have a pointer to its parent, okay? So each one of them is going to have a pointer to the parent. This is the information we're going to store. Of course, the root is nil, okay? It, the parent of the root is nil. So this is a tree structure that represents that set. And for BF, for example, it could be BF, okay? So this is... So if you look at this, here we have two, a set of two trees. This is what we call a forest, okay? So we have two trees like this. And we always have, when we talk about a set, we always have pointer to the root of that tree, okay? So I can have a pointer to this and a pointer to this. If we have this structure now, so what about making set? If we look at this, notice that the trees, by the way, are not necessarily binary. And if I want to do make set, Okay, make set, uh, set of x. All we need to do is just something like this, right? It's a tree with a single node whose parent is nil. It's O of 1 operation. What about fine, sorry, union of x and y? Okay, and suppose x and y here are the roots of the tree. Well, in this case, if I look at the top two trees here, the BF and the other one. One way to do the union is, so I have C here, E, J, D. I'm not drawing the arrows here, but the arrows are pointing up. G, A, H. And I have this tree here, B, F. And the way we do the union is now I can say that the parent of B is C. The parent of B is C here. Okay, so this is how we do the union because now I have pointers to the roots of the two trees. I look at the smaller of the two trees, the smaller in terms of the number of nodes. So this tree has two nodes in it. This tree has seven nodes in it. I will do the union by making the root, the parent of the root of the smaller of the two trees, point to the parent of the larger tree, okay? So if you think about this here, all I'm doing is make the parent of the root of the smaller tree point to the root of the larger tree. It is also O of 1 operation, okay? Now, in the linked list uh, representation, the union was the costly one, make set and find were the easy ones or the, the, the cheap ones. Here in this case, make set and union are the cheap ones. Each one of them is O of 1 operations. But what about find set? Find set of X. So suppose I say here in this case, find set of G. So how do we find set of G? Again, remember that in all these cases, I'm saying I'm giving you a pointer. I'm giving you a pointer to that element that I'm asking you to find. The only thing you need to do is look at the parent and the parent. You keep going up until you get to the root of the tree and you say, this belongs to set C, okay? The set whose representative is C. And if you think about this now, that in the worst case, the running time of this 
of this algorithm of finding set is on the order of the height of the tree. Okay, so if the tree is very, very high, this operation is going to be expensive. If the tree is not very high, it's going to be cheaper. Now, the question is, given the way we do the union and given the way we do this make set, what is the height of the tree? Okay, even though the tree is not binary, even though it seems that we could add any trees in any order we want, I want to remind you that the three applications, for example, I illustrated at the beginning, equivalence classes, minimum spanning tree, and connected components, all of them started with n operations of make set, n operations of make set, each of which made a set of one, one element in it. Then the union operations applied on that. So I want to now talk about the height of the tree in such a scenario here. Okay, so I want to basically say that I want to talk about the theorem here that let T, let T be a tree representing a set of a tree representing a set. a set of n elements but not any tree it was constructed so a set of n elements that was constructed by n calls by n calls to make set okay so n calls created in, in, in singletons and then followed by union, calls to union. Okay, so let tree T be a tree that has n nodes in it. That tree was built, again, because of the way the algorithms and the applications of this data structure are, the way it was built by first calling in operations of make set, and then after that, we called the union again n minus one times, such that we got a tree that has that has n elements in it. Then I would say, then the claim is that the height of the tree, h of t, is at most log n. Okay? So this is the theorem that if we do the operations in the following way, first we created n singletons, and then we did the union operations on it, the height of the resulting tree cannot be worse than log n, okay? Because keep in mind, again, the way the union works, it always merges the smaller of the two trees to the larger of the, of the trees, okay? And the proof is actually very simple and is always on these cases by induction on the height of the tree, okay? So I will use notation that the cardinality of t is the number of nodes in t and t and again i'm using h of t as the height of t okay what do i want to show here i want to show that the tree t again that's built in such a in such a way satisfies t the size of t is greater than or equal to 2 of h okay this is what i want to show we want to show why is this why does this prove what we are interested in because again take the log of both sides you will get the log of the size of t greater than or equal to h okay so i want to basically show that if we build a tree with n nodes by first calling make set n times and then do, doing the union on it to build a tree with n elements in it or n nodes in it then the height of that tree cannot exceed log n, okay? And the proof, again, is induction on h, okay? So the base case, the base case, when h is 0, we have the size of the tree is 1. It has one element in it, and 1 is greater than or equal to 2 to the 0, 2 to the h, right? So the base case holds, okay? Now we want to do the inductive step. And the way I will do it is as follows. Again, it's by, uh, by strong induction, or in this case, by structural induction. So we need to think about assuming something about 
the trees that we are going to use to build the, the tree T here, okay? So now assume that for any for any tree S that if the height of S is smaller than or equal to H then the number of nodes in H is at least 2 to the H of S. Okay, this, this, all of this here, this is the inductive hypothesis. Okay, this is the inductive hypothesis. I am saying, I want to now prove something on trees whose height is H plus 1. So I will assume that for any tree whose height is, at, is H or smaller than H, then the number of nodes in that tree is at least two to the h of that to the height of that tree. Okay, so this is the inductive hypothesis now, and now let's look at t. That let's assume now let t t is a tree. Is the first tree. The first tree created with height h plus 1, okay? What does this mean? Remember that we have a set, a, a, a list of union operations. So the first union created a tree of size 2, the second union could have created a, a tree of size of, of height 3, and so on. What I'm saying is that in by inductive hypothesis, I am assuming something about all trees whose height is up to h. Now I'm saying let t be the very first tree we see during the algorithm whose height is h plus 1, okay? So tree is the first height, the first tree whose height is h plus 1. Then the tree t must have been built like this. The tree t is as follows. It has two components here, t1, t1, and we had t2, and the root of t2 pointed to the root of t1. This whole tree is t, okay? This whole tree with that has t1 and t2 and the root of t2 is pointing to the root of t1. This is this tree is t. Now we know by the way we are doing the, the union that the number of nodes in t1 is at least the number of nodes of t2 because we merge the smaller of the two trees with the larger one. But in addition, I know that the height of this full tree here Okay, so the height of the tree T, H of T, is H plus 1, right? Now, we know that T, the height of T2 is H here. Why is it H? Because T1 is, the height of T1 is at, is at most H. The height of T1 is at most H here. So the height of t1 is at most h. Why is it at most h? Because if it was h plus 1, then that violates the assumption that t is the first tree created with, with height h plus 1. So if the height of t1 is at most h, to make a tree by union with that will, will create a new tree whose root is the root of t1 and whose height is, is h plus 1, then I must have added a tree whose height is h and added it to the root because now the height of t is that h, the height of that tree is this h here, plus 1 for this for this edge here. So this is where we get the h plus 1, the height of t, okay? So we know that the height of t, 2, is h. We know the height of t1 must be at most h. And now the height of t is h plus 1 using this construction okay so then we know that by the inductive hypothesis by the inductive hypothesis then the number of nodes in t2 is at least 2 to the h okay because its height is h now we also know that the number of nodes in t is the number of nodes in t1 plus the number of nodes in t2. We don't create any new nodes here. The root of t2 points to, to t1. So these numbers, we know that 
we know that the, the, the number of nodes in T1 is greater than or equal to T2. So these are greater than two times, right? In other words, I mean, if I want to write it so with more clarity here, just so that nobody misses it, we know that the, num the size of T1 is greater than or equal to the size of T2. And we know that the size of T2 is greater than or equal to the size of T2, vacuously. And this is 2 T2 here. And this will be basically now greater than 2 times 2 to the h, which is 2 to the h plus 1. Okay, where did I get the size of t2 is 2 to the h? By the inductive hypothesis. So now what we showed here is that, what we showed is that the size of t is greater than or equal to 2 to the h plus 1. So now we have proven that a tree that is built in the, in the, with this sequence of operations will have, the number of nodes in it is at least 2 to the h of that tree. Therefore, the height of the tree is at most log of n if n is the number of nodes in the tree. Okay, so now with this, with this algorithm, with this uh, representation where we have every set is represented by a tree and we take the union of two sets by always merging the smaller on the, onto the larger, then the union takes O of 1, the make set takes O of 1, find takes O of H, but H is log of N. So now we have find, the find operation takes log N. And we can improve this slightly by doing something that we call path compression. When we are doing find operations, we start compressing the path in the tree, and that can result in even more optimized running time or better running time than this one here.